All right, so another beautiful day here in the Sierra Foothills, just below Sequoia National Park in California. Uh, today I'm gonna do a painting of this creek. I'm gonna try to get some of the translucency or transparency in the foreground here or in the water in the foreground. Uh, maybe include some of the rocks, but as usual, you know, I'm gonna squint at the scene to simplify it into big shapes. And uh, there's some nice dark shapes back here. And I do want to include some of the sky as well. Just, you know, little bits of it coming through the trees. And then also maybe these bits of green in the distance as well. I'm painting out a 12 by 16 inch panel today. And I've still got some paint on my palette from yesterday. Just my normal colors using Liquid Original for my medium. An assortment of brushes here. But lately I've been using my natural bristle uh, flats, number eights and number sixes. Toning with burnt sienna, thinning with odorless mineral spirits. I debated whether or not to tone today, but I am going to. Uh, and I'm gonna wipe it down so that it's just a very light tone. And part of the reason is, is that I like uh, the panel or the canvas to have a slight dampness to it from the mineral spirits. It helps the paint go down quickly. All right, wiping it down with a paper towel. Using a natural bristle number two flat to sketch out the painting, and I'm using burnt sienna. Uh, it's kind of like a rocky bank here, and then it sort of goes like that. And so this area in here, you know, is kind of the close up of the river. I'm sort of looking more down into the water, so I'll be able to see some of the rocks. This is all dark over here, trees, maybe a tree coming across like that. I don't know if I'll put that in. So a very simple composition, which is what I like. Uh, you have much more success if you keep things simple. All right, starting with my darks, and I'm using ultramarine, a burnt sienna, and some alizarin crimson. So this is sort of a transparent dark, uh, which is what I usually do. I've also thinned this with liquid. So what I'm gonna do is squint at the scene and kind of reduce it to the darkest darks. I don't want it to be too dark. I do want to keep it transparent. And actually some of the brushwork here, or some of the, you know, streakiness kind of suggests some of the branches and broken you know like sort of debris and whatnot a lot of branches and logs and trees and stuff came down uh, came down the river with all the rain so it's all kind of gathered up at the base uh, of these tree trunks and there's some rocks here but it's kind of dark above the rocks and there's another tree going up here i think i'm gonna go lighter with these distant trees possibly like sort of a blue green back there all right, for the distant trees, I'm using ultramarine blue, titanium white, and some yellow ochre. I think I wanna have like a low spot in the trees right about here, possibly. And we have it come up, you know, just keep the uh, tree line sort of irregular. And maybe even, you know, right off the top over here. So I'm looking at the scene, but I'm also thinking about composition and shapes. That's one of the nice things about painting landscapes is that, you know, you, you can focus on the abstract patterns and you can change them around to, uh, you know, to make for a nice composition. Uh, this straight line maybe to come down a little bit. That's the basic idea. I'm gonna put the sky in next. I'm using ultramarine, titanium white, and a little bit of phthalo blue. And I'll probably lighten this up a bit. Uh, but this is a nice uh, color and value to start with. And I'm actually using a number four um, natural bristle flat. I thought I had sixes, but I don't. So I'm using, uh, I'll probably use this number four for the whole painting. Uh, if you push down on this, you know, you can get a pretty decent sized stroke, so I think this one will work. Okay, so for the sand, I'm using my dark mixture, but I'm just adding a little bit of uh, titanium white to it. I may come over this mixture with a bit of yellow if I feel like I want to warm it up, but this is a good starting point. And the other side is a little bit warmer and actually lighter in value. Adding some more titanium white and some yellow ochre. And I want to establish these lights early on so I'll know how dark to make uh, the creek. And this is uh, the lightest spot in the painting aside from the white water right in here and maybe a little bit in the distance. Uh, also, yeah, actually there's distant shore over here is kind of the same color. 
something like that. All right, and now the next thing is going to be to get you know a general color for the water. The water is much darker than the shore. First thing I'm going to do is get kind of a general uh, color and value for the water, maybe focusing on an area like right here. Mixing up a warm dark green using ultramarine, cadmium yellow medium, uh, lizard crimson, and some yellow ochre. All right, keeping this mixture thin because I will be uh, coming over this with reflections and then little bits of rocks or things that are visible through the water in the foreground. Just want to establish a nice value pattern to begin with. Again, just squinting at the scene and thinking of it as abstract shapes. Actually, the water kind of comes underneath this bank here. All right, and I need to fill in down here. Adding more yellow ochre to the mix. Okay. All right, mixing up a saturated green here using phthalo blue, uh, lizard crimson, and some uh, cadmium yellow medium. Little bits of bright green in here. And then also a little bit on this distant shore. Um, not as bright, so I'm just going to kind of mix it with the colors that are already there. All right, so there is the scrub in, and I like the pattern. I think I've maintained, you know, a decent value here, um, you know, to be able to darken up some of the areas over here, and then also add some of the rocks in the water here. The next step is just to go in with uh, thicker paint and do a little bit more definition, you know, hopefully without overworking things. So I'm using my dark mixture here to reinforce some of the darkest darks. All right, and the pile of branches is actually bigger than I've painted it. And I want to, you know, accentuate that because that's a key feature this year in particular. Reinforce the darks over here. All right, I'm using a warm gray that I just found on my palette to reinforce some of these trees. And I keep squinting at the scene and I'm squinting at the painting because I, I want to make sure that I don't break up this shape too much. Added some titanium white to my green mixture. Uh, I just kind of want to lighten up these distant trees, but still keep the value relationship between the sky and the trees um, somewhat accurate. Uh, and the areas in here are a little bit darker. And there's some more dark green over here as well. All right, I'm noticing some sort of bluer or cooler tones in the rocks up, especially around here. And, you know, looking for bits of warm and cool within the shapes, but doing my best not to uh, break up the design. So keeping the value range pretty narrow. Okay, now I want to make sure that this shoreline is kind of broken up a bit, you know, and not too perfect because there's a bunch of rocks that sort of come out into the creek. There's a, kind of an area of shadow in here. All right, and there's a rock here and here. So first I'll get this dark shape. I may need to darken it up a bit more, um, but for now this is a good start. And I'm gonna make the transition from the shadow to the lighter bits of the water um, a kind of gentle transition or you know just have irregular brush strokes along that transition because this shadow is from a tree. All right the water out here is darker too but it's kind of greener in color. All right and bits of white water that appear to be reflecting the sky. All right this is some of the white water that's starting in the shadows. You know, but I keep getting back, making sure that the overall design is staying intact. So next I'm putting the sky reflections on the water using ultramarine blue and titanium white. I need to load the brush quite a bit because I don't want to mix into the color that's already there. Also, I need to squint and make sure that my values for this uh, reflection are not too light. Again, trying to keep these big shapes intact. All 
right, so here is what I finished up with. I spent a lot of time getting the values of the water reflect or the sky reflections to read properly. At first they were too dark, uh, then too light. But I think in the end it worked out. After I got the uh, sky reflections in place, then I came back and touched up some of the rocks that were below the surface just by adding delicate shifts of uh, value and temperature. And we'll do a little close up, maybe a close up of some of these branches and sticks. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos and a materials list, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.